Day 4 of the Overwatch League has just wrapped up at the time of me sitting down to write the script for my next video. After a very exciting set of matches and some heated discussions on Discord, the question started to arise, are Korean teams ruining the Overwatch League? There are a couple different perspectives to consider in this conversation, as well as the fact that people watch sports, and in this case esports, for different reasons. So I want to take a look at these different angles and arguments and try to just add my own thoughts to the mix. At the end of the day, if you feel a certain way about any such thing as we discussed today, then neither I nor anybody else can tell you that what you're feeling is wrong. But what is interesting for us today in our discussion is where these impressions come from, and whether or not they're actually a problem to consider in a greater sense. We'll be discussing that and more right after this. Man, I love playing Overwatch, but sometimes competitive play is just getting too stressful for me. And I hate having to spend an hour looking through Steam to find other games to play in an attempt to unwind. If only there was a service that sent a pack of high value games to me every month for only $12, so I always have something new to play when I'm getting tilted from Overwatch. I mean, if something like that existed, it would be cool if I could also somehow support charity with my purchase. Well, wish no longer, my friends, because Humble Monthly exists. Get Civilization 6 as an early unlock for this month's Humble Monthly while waiting for the rest of your games to unlock in a couple of weeks. You can cancel anytime, every new subscriber benefits my channel, and as is the nature of Humble Bundle, your purchase naturally also benefits charity. Sign up for Humble Monthly by using the link in the description below and enjoy yourself a great value gaming experience. So let me open this up by reinforcing what I said a couple of days ago in my initial coverage of the Overwatch League. It is insanely fun to watch. Sadly, I could not catch every single match, and not every match was worth watching either, at least to me personally, but overall, the production quality is great and the hype is most certainly there. Something that has been grinding a few people's gears, however, are the Korean teams featured in the league. Naturally, we have Seoul Dynasty, which is widely considered to be the strongest team in the league, and quite frankly, the the best team in the world. But then the fact that NYXL and London Spitfire feature full Korean rosters has not been setting too well with a few people. But we're getting high level Overwatch Pro play on our screens on a regular. Who cares about where the players come from, you might ask. Well, this is where we get into the first point of contention. Why do people watch the league in the first place? With how much they are trying to set this whole thing up as though it is a traditional sport, it's only natural that by many fans it is also going to be treated as such, and if some of you are fans of said traditional sports, then you might also know that the watching experience does not solely come down to watching matches, period. I've been talking to a few people who said that they feel disconnected from their home teams in the name of New York Excelsior as well as London Spitfire because they are featuring fully Korean rosters. The fact that not a single player originated from their city, let alone their country, just makes it difficult for them to feel connected to their team. And that should not come to anybody's surprise. In sports, origin stories are also often consider when people decide who they want to cheer on. Knowing that a star player started all the way at the bottom is way more exciting when knowing that they originated from the same city as you. However, it is also completely normal for traditional sports to have teams consisting of fairly international players. That is a good and a bad thing. On the good side, that means that people can cheer for whoever they want without feeling weird about it. Some sports fans might feel an obligation to cheer for their city's team, but in this type of system, it is very well possible that a star player in a another city's team started off in a lower class team from your own city. It's this kind of feeling that many people have during the World Cup where they feel they have to cheer for their country's team, even when based on many other reasons they might prefer a different one. So yes, the fact that the entire roster of NYXL and Spitfire are straight up imported from Korea sucks for those who want to feel connected to their home city's teams. But the international nature of the league as a whole means that you're not limited to only be well, let's say allowed to cheer for your home city, because many teams feature players from all kinds of places all over the world. If my city featured a fully Korean roster for the Overwatch League, I'd be hesitant to cheer for them as well. I too would not feel connected to that team, but that's fine, because for a number of American teams, I do get that very feeling. Other teams that give me reason to like them and cheer for them solely based on their showing in the league. And I know that to many this might sound plain and simply stupid, being allowed to cheer 
for a team is as stupid of a thought to one, as much as the idea of cheering for a team that is not representing your home city is a weird thought to others. When it comes to sports, it is very rarely about the skill that a team brings to the table. Yes, everyone wants their favorite team to win, but most deeply invested fans cheer for their teams for different reasons than that. Maybe they cheer for them because they feel they represent their home city very well, or maybe they are known for their outstanding personalities, or maybe their underdog story fascinated them and that's why they are starting to root for them. People cheer on teams for many different reasons, and the same thing is the case in the Overwatch League. That does not mean that your feeling of disconnect is unwarranted when the entire roster for your team was brought from a different country entirely. But it's not a completely unusual procedure either. But that brings us to another point. Within all the reasons that people have to watch events like that, some are also just interested in watching the highest level of play, and evidently, many Korean rosters bring right that to the league. You might not like them for one reason or another, but fact is that currently, pre-Overwatch League essentially, Korea was home to a number of very strong players which the league benefits from. Naturally, if you are interested in those tight matchups, then having Korean teams just kinda stomp all over Western teams is not a very fun watching experience, whether you do cheer for them or not. But this is not an issue that's really well, addressable. Or at least the league is already doing all it can to address that. Fact is that esports culture is way bigger in Korea than it is in many other places in the West, but that's not the sole reason why these stomps are happening. If you set up a league of this magnitude, especially with the idea of adding more teams in future seasons, these types of skill disparities will always be there. Overwatch League teams may present the best players in the world, but even among the best, there are differences in skill. Even if you look at traditional sports leagues, not everyone is even remotely in the same ballpark of skill. Favorites and underdogs will always exist and that is part of the excitement too. You might be upset that your favorite team got stomped or you might be bored when watching any team get stomped period, but don't forget that this is the first season. These teams are feeling each other out, learning how they tick, what they can do well and which weaknesses they can exploit. Teams will rise to the top and fall to the bottom very frequently as the league goes on because such is simply the nature of any type of sports league. I want to remind you of of what the Overwatch Pro scene looked like beforehand. Between the Western and the Korean scene, the only team that could really bring the fight to the Koreans was Envious. And sure, you had some teams who were able to challenge them, like Immortals and Rogue, but at the end of the day, Envious would rise to an indisputable first place in the West anyway. And now look at how the league is playing out. They may not be able to make everyone equally strong, but what they can do is create equal opportunities. And that working is already showing in those matches. Previously, most people did not even expect that Envious could even lose a series against a non-Korean lineup. And in the opening week of the Overwatch League, we saw Dallas Fuel put a serious dent in that armor of Seoul Dynasty. Closing the gap, LA Valiant even won when they played against Dallas Fuel, with the LA Gladiators further showing us that Seoul Dynasty is not gonna be invincible forever. You see, you can only create this kind of environment by promoting competition. The only reason Medieval Warfare advanced so quickly in Europe Europe was because we were busy just constantly beefing out our differences. And that showed when other nations tried to challenge Europeans. It was this constant conflict that created competition to be the first to invent the next huge thing that would bring victory to the battlefield. And it wasn't until outside nations were confronted with that that they realized how far behind they were when it came to warfare. And that's what's happening to us as well. We had two separate regions that could only get better by fighting among themselves. But because Koreans are largely way more serious about esports as a whole, their gameplay was just way ahead of most western teams. Now that we bring all these teams together in the league, we finally created this much needed level of competition that only brings up the best of each team. The league is creating equal opportunities for every team by providing an environment in which these players can flourish. Team houses, coaches and a livelihood supported by their career as pro players. And the fact that some western teams are already able to take the fight not only to former envious Dallas Fuel, but also show a very very strong performance against Seoul Dynasty, who again is considered the best team in the league, is a testament to the league working. Man, I haven't been this excited about anything Overwatch related in a long time. The Overwatch League to me already is a great success, and I can't wait to see what kinds of stories unfold as the seasons roll out. I have seen so many posts of people sharing stories about how they did not have a lot of hope in this project, but then they ended up really enjoying it. Hell, even people who never
ever played Overwatch that thought it was entertaining to watch. There is so much good coming out of the Overwatch League that I can't help but be excited. And if there's one thing that motivates me to get back in the game and practice new heroes, then it is watching some high-octane Overwatch League matches. Honestly guys, with so much controversy, toxicity and dispute going on in our community at all times, naturally not the least of which is further spread by YouTubers such as myself, seeing how the Overwatch League just brings fans closer together rather than tearing them apart is amazing. Sharing our passion for the game, enjoying matches between the best players in the world and cheering them on together on social media and Discord. The League is bringing us together as a community and I absolutely love it. I went on a bit of a tangent here and I apologize for that, but bottom line is that you're not wrong if you feel disconnected from your home team for featuring players who collectively originated from an entirely different country. But try to see that as an opportunity to find things to like and dislike about teams that are not solely based on which city they are representing. Korean teams bring a level of competition to the league that is much needed to further the western pro scene as well. There always will be underdogs and favorites, and by that, stomps are not going anywhere either. But what's interesting about this is how these matches are starting to create rivalries and other types of stories. Because this is what it ultimately comes down to, seeing teams improve over time and following their stories. But this concludes today's video on whether or not I believe the Korean teams are ruining the Overwatch League. Trust me guys, I don't enjoy watching stomps all the time either, but based on my experience watching traditional sports, I honestly don't think that it can be avoided. But hey, let me know what you think about this whole issue by leaving a comment down in the comment section below. While you're down there, don't forget to get into the description to check out Humble Bundle and their Humble Monthly service to have awesome digital games delivered to you every month. I'm out for the day, thanks for watching and I hope to see you all next time.